pre-recording this session of the TomCast. So, for my friends at MICA, Jackie Ross's pre-production class on Thursday, I did about a 1 to 90 minute demo, 1 hour to 90 minute demo, on brainstorming a completely new scene out of your head using some fundamentals of composition and illustration. I work very fast. I like to make a mess. I like to make this primordial ooze of a universe and then I let the life grow out of the drawing that I paint. I wish I recorded that session, but it was through a Zoom call. I don't know how to do that yet. I probably could figure it out. But back to the point. I am going to keep working on this. I have my coffee today. It's a beautiful day. It's Pacific Northwesty, 63, breezy and damp, and the grass is growing, and the trees are budding, and the birds are chirping, and it's just fantastic outside. So I got some deep, deep breaths of that wonderful, warm, nurturing, moist air. And now I'm going to keep drawing. And I have a bunch of new ideas as to where to take this 90-minute piece into something that might be four, five, six, seven, eight hundred hours worth of work. So we've already done about 30 minutes worth of work today. And now I'm going to put away this original drawing, this brainstorming session, and I'll keep going. So here's some things I'm thinking about. I didn't like how much the figure was covered up, so what if I pretend this cape is of a thinner material and the wind direction is slightly different, so we're getting some of the contour of the figure underneath. Because really, I just wanted to draw a figure, and in the time of the class, I didn't have time to draw that figure out. I had to get to the composition, so we used the old, the old cape trick to cover up the figure so we don't have to spend too much time drawing it. But now, I'm going to render it out. On the playlist this morning is Paige McConnell's Maybe Were the Visitors album. Paige, famously of the band Fish. He is the keyboardist. Pianos. Paige on the keys, as my friend Quillis might say. Got to get a highlight on that booty. Because that's fun. Come on, anatomy's fun. These knees are probably too low. Let's adjust that. Looks like the knee was he correct here, but then the calf was like too big. Something. Anyway, I, I, I got the idea that maybe this monster is translucent-ish. A lot of light bouncing in and some ionized stellar hydrogen inside. Maybe he's a gas giant monster. Most of today we'll just be drawing, not talking so much. I'm really digging this new album. But this might be a fun rendering task to think about the layers of atmosphere. Ooh, speaking of atmosphere, let's get Let's define some more clouds back here in the background. I was having a good time looking at the way the clouds change shape as they roll over the round earth. They're like flatten and they stretch out, but you're seeing them from the bottom side. Because if the earth's round, and the clouds are always at a normal. They stack up vertically like a, like a set of cylinders. So if you have a curve, I have three cups here, but I can't hold all three at the same time. So if you had, if the earth was flat, all the cups would stack up uh, parallel with each other. But because the earth is round and clouds grow against gravity vertically, it's more like there are like sticking toilet paper tubes around another tube. This is what I want to demonstrate here. The cloud is this, it's vertical, and the earth is round. So as the clouds go away from the gravity, they're going to arc too. Just came to that conclusion the other day. It's a way to prove the earth is round without even moving from the spot you're in. Instead of getting up really high to look down to see the curvature of the earth, we can just look up at known objects, which are the clouds, and see how they change shape. You have to Again, you might need to get to a high location. Like here in Shrewsbury, I'm on the top of a hill. And it gives me this false low horizon in all directions. So I'm starting to see more of the 
circular spherical shape of this guy. I'm not great at talking. I'm working on it. But that's kind of why things sound a little silly. I'm practicing talking, like Joe Rogan says. Had a good chat with my buddy Dorian last night about people who who talk for a living. I was saying, like, you can't just be good at talking. You have to know something. You have to have a specialty. And maybe that's a key with entertaining and talking to people is you need to know something. It's frustrating in conversations, and I love my friends, but when we talk about things that we don't know very much about, we know just enough to be dangerous. We end up arguing over points. No, it was 1836. Ah, I think it was 1863. No, 1836. Yeah, I think it's 1863 because in 1836, you didn't have X, Y, and Z. Oh, but no, it was because I mean, you had, we had A, B, and C. And Right? But if you have an actual expert who's humbled by the amount of research and knowledge there is in a specific subject, you might say, well, yes, the theory like you suggest is correct. However, what I've found in my research is I've seen, in my experience, ex you know, instead of talking in generalities, the educated person talks in specifics pertaining to their point of view, things that they personally have observed. And so how can you argue with something that they've seen? I mean, that's why lawyers exist, of course, confrontational people who are willing to argue with someone else professionally for, for money. <laughs> it's no surprise that the divorces between lawyers are the worst because they're already confrontational people to begin with. They, in fact, love confrontation. They revel in it. And uh, their goal is to win. Yeah, that explains a lot about my uh, family right now. But that's okay. That's okay. I still love people even if they're confrontational. I know I'm more confrontational than most artists out there. I played football. I'm not confrontational compared to the average American, but I'm confrontational compared to some of the artists I know. You know what's also cool about clouds is their layers. So you can have like one layer of clouds going one way, and this would be like the topmost layer. Is this like a fishbone, like diagonal maybe pattern? That's kind of cool. Uh, something like that. And they're even lit from like a different angle. Like the, the topmost clouds might actually be pretty like underlit and pink. Like the, the top lit clouds are probably brighter than the low clouds because they're getting more of that light. Aren't they? They're not occluded by the earth and thinner atmosphere. It's kind of interesting. We're just going to play with it. Just going to have some fun. It's like really high contrails. It's interesting. And that'll like, maybe you can do a little curvature of the earth suggested there. I don't know, man. I don't know if it's really working, but I like the idea of it. Hey, man. Just trying to make some artwork here, man. Trying to be experimental, man. So I've established already what the color of the glass is and what the glow is from inside of this crane. And now I'm just going to establish the rear, the front window. See how more compelling that is? So much more compelling. So much more interest. If you can just think one layer further. Think in layers. Stuff stacked up on top of other stuff. That's, so you have your, your general shape, and then maybe I'm imagining like another like mini winch system here. Or maybe it's like a, there's a crane to bring the operator up onto the crane. That, that's kind of a neat idea. Does that exist? I don't know. I'm just going off the top of my head. And let's, uh, let's mount some other thing. Maybe there's something to break up a silhouette, like a, like a, like a light up top. Something like that. Just something to break up. Break up the silhouette. Silhouette, gentle silhouette. We could even make this really old school. We can make a little grate to it. 
crossbars. Maybe just one one crossbar there. So this two shapes, foreground and background, are actually slightly adjacent. It's better to have overlap than to have near misses in artwork. Because the near miss has become very obvious. Your eye goes to that because the near miss is the highest contrast. The little air gap. Just to darken the background just a little bit. A little illusionism trick. Darken the distant. Brighten the close, just at the edge. Just at the edge. Mm, getting excited. So just a couple details back there to make it a little more interesting to look at. Just a little bit. A little more saturation, a little more brightness. Just get some highlight there. Just very oh so oh so gently, just make it a little bit lighter as it's popping off that surface. So if you want something to recede, just make it a little darker. If you want something to pop out, just a little, just a hint brighter, just a hint. One to five percent, right? And if you really want to hit, make it hit. Let's go a little blue, and really gently, thirty percent. Little little highlight there, a little highlight there. Boom, boom. Talking like the doc, two time, 1993, 1994. Who am I talking about? The great and only Doctor Disrespect. Has a book out now. Man, this Paige McConnell album is so good. It's very ambient. It reminds me of a video game my friends worked on it. I contributed a little bit in the QA2 called Off World Trading Company. Original soundtrack by Christopher Tin of composing Civ 4's Baba Yetu fame. Baba Yetu. Some Swahili choir singing a recomposed version of the Our Father Prayer in this uh, African tongue, which is cool, it's beautiful. I believe it won a Grammy for best soundtrack in a game, I think. Something like that. I think that was pretty good, actually. I'm not even I'm not even ashamed of that rendition. It's gonna go with it. It's like super curvature of the earth, making going it kind of fisheye. Maybe I'll go with the whole scene a little fisheye. It's like warp everything over to the right just a little bit. Let's change change this that's uh, not the same color, just a little different. A little different concrete color. Yeah, that's what I want. That's a little better. So break the silhouette. I miss Team Fortress Classic. I miss Team Fortress 2 as well. Maybe I'll go download that today. I need to play a new game, ladies and gentlemen. It's been so long. What happens if we give it like a bright highlight window? It's pretty cool. A little, a little more yellow on that area. Boom. Boom. Kind of like Cheshire Cat looking. Cheshire Cat looking window set here. And maybe browner. Browner at the bottom. And then we have gold. We got to have some purple. So that's why this works out. The gold bounces off the purple monster uh, pretty well. Pretty sweet. I mean, these, I don't know what to highlight this because it's a smokestack, right? I 
I don't know if, I'm not feeling it. Let's change it up. Yeah, I don't, I'm not feeling this thing at all. I don't like the change of materials. It probably should just be like dark. It should just be the same. See, the repeating, if you have repeating shapes, they tell pattern, they tell direction. And if they're the same shapes, just one's bigger than the other one, it's indicating perspective. So that's why repeating forms are so important in establishing scale, depth. A little a couple sparkly boys in here. So I like I went to the blue ears and that's kind of fun. I'm liking that now, that hard blue. That's fun. Very childlike hands. Mix it. I like the idea of trying to make make the monster vulnerable. Just don't know what it's doing. It's just a big guy. It doesn't know where he's supposed to be. It's like a 40 foot toddler. Right? So I want a gray, low cloud line. I just don't know what color, what shade. I guess it's got to be cooler. That feels all right. You know what time it is. Time to flip the canvas. All right, I'm immediately seeing that this sign is a little janky. Wailing Turner Construction. I want. I want a warning. Some say it was a warning. Some say it was a sign. You stand right there with the place of the sign. Thanks, Trent Reznor. Thank you, Trent Reznor, for gracing the Tomcast with your excellent. Yeah, just James Reptile, just underneath the skin. Let's get some green lights because they're weird. Oh, maybe it's attracted to this thing. Maybe that's what's up. That'd be really funny in the storyline. Like maybe this thing's looking at the crane because the crane's got some like green and like red lights and junk on it. Oh yeah, we got a narrative now. We got an action. 
this was accidental, but it's, this is why we have to draw every day, because sometimes you just kind of connect the dots to something. Dude's like, whoa, there's a thing over there. Maybe it's like me. This particular color of blue reminds me of the oil, not even oil paint, tempera? Tempera paint? Acrylic, maybe the acrylic blue, this really thick cobalt looking blue. Yeah, it's that acrylic high school paint. Oh, uh, Dr. Thomas Anastasia, rest in peace. Hope you're hope you're doing good in the hereafter. So that's why the bottom of the cloud's got to be brown, because it's bouncing, bouncing light off of the brown Baltimore. So sometimes we, we shade the tops of the buildings of the light bouncing off the sky, but then the bottoms of the clouds are the bounce color coming off of the earth. Just get a little of that hue in there. See, that's, that's where you get your colors from. You just kind of bounce, you bounce things off each other. You pick a little bit up on the way. I learned that from some rendering techniques stuff we do. Ray trace, bounce light. Sometimes it takes a mathematician or a scientist to come up with the terminology in order for the artists to talk about what they do. And the linguists and the and the scientists It is the collaboration across disciplines that gives us an enriched language of communication. Tom, what are you talking about, brother? So I just want to like take some of that brown out of these clouds in the background. So I'm going to go with maybe hue layer and go a little bit richer, healthier blue. And let's see if we can knock some of that brown out. Hue is not doing it. Let's try color. Color is better. Yep, that's what's up. That's what's up. Just, just going back to a more average blue. Maybe that's too, that's too bright. I want to blur everything out there too. More yellow gold for this cloud. Yeah, this cloud needs to come across more, and then the one over here maybe. Yeah, okay. So let's go back to paint. Where's my music at? There's not enough songs. It's like 35 minutes of songs in that page album. Come on, man. Come on. Okay, I need new. Uh, let's go. Maybe uh, Interpol? Nah, I don't like the music when it's talking when I'm painting. I gotta have no talking. Why? Because I'm the one that needs to be talking. Nine Inch Nails had some really cool non talking albums like Atticus Ross, <laughs> soundtracks. This is tough. I don't have any music on my computer that doesn't have talking on it. I'm liking these DJ set videos, ladies and gentlemen. You can go on the internet and look up a Benny Benassi, and you'll get these DJs is playing in beautiful environments. Like here, here's one. Here's just a DJ set. It's a single circle, C E R C L E, and it's DJs performing in wild places. Like this looks like Petra or something. Super cool. I'm uh, probably going to get that audio part cut out because I had too much of it. Let's get some music in the background. It's important to have a soundtrack. Music really changes your whole your whole shindag, doesn't it? 
whole, your whole business. So as the clouds go up, they're going to go lighter too. So the bottom of the cloud is going to have the lowest energy. So cl more, less energy is redder, it's darker. Higher energy is more towards the ultraviolet, blues, purples. So this spectrum that we see on our color is really energy. Like the peak energy is probably around here. And then like weaker energy is like down, 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 something like that. It's on that Kelvin scale. So in our, we identify relationships and to make them apparent to those who aren't sensitive to the language of visual relationships, we exaggerate those relationships, thus creating understanding. So this gradient on the cloud in the real world would be so subtle your human eye couldn't detect it just by looking at it quickly. So, But I'm exaggerating that gradient from dark to light in a shorter amount of space. It's like speeding it up. It's an exaggeration for the sake of storytelling. Video games do this too. Video games make it fun to run across a landscape because they give the player the ability to run it like 100 miles an hour. They give you the feeling of being a superhuman, but it's also time compressing. It's telling a story in less time. Mario ran across the world. You don't, in a book, it'd be very boring if you described every single step that Mario took to get across the whole of the subcontinent. I'm going to speed up that time scale. I think that's why games are fun, because games take the experience of the real world and abstract it into a, a way that gives the viewer the perception of like tremendous power like playing chess it's metaphor for the arm moving armies across Europe isn't it this track's pretty funky Solumon at Theatre Antique d'Orange in France for circle very cool. Man, I miss concerts so much. I understand why people go to the club now. I never liked going to the club. But I can see if you're like deprived and you really love music and you love being around people, that's just what you want. I guess I just didn't love being around random people that much <laughs> or being around just pure music. I just didn't love music as much as these people love music. This wasn't for me. Now, might be for me. So these two clouds are kind of similar in scale and puffiness. So I really want I want to delineate this one, make the details of it just much, much, much bigger. Because it's a lot closer to us. So to make this thing really pop, I'm going to go really dark, Ooh, too dark, in the cloud. And now you see it's blurring with the foreground, and then I'll come back with a hard brush. It's like, this is too solid just to, just to really hit it. You pick that close color, brighten it a little bit more, bam, 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 bam. All right. That just establishes that silhouette. And now we could be really fancy. We could dump, we could dull it down just a little bit to give it its own sense of depth internally. Depth, man. That's what I like. I want to go deep. It's so easy just to get lost in some details. What's going on here? Is there like a, a hook, a thing? What? What is it? Is it some kind of chain gang? What? Some kind of controller? How do you make your ideas solid? Solid. Well, you have to make them believable. Build a foundation. You have to build a structure. Structure that holds 
the forms together. I don't know how that feels. It's feeling pretty good right now. Get some messages. Man, am I supposed to go to the Dutch market today? I don't think I can, though. I don't really want to drive much. I drove down to Hunt Valley last night. Got some Wegman subs. Oh, I just remembered I got a sub in the fridge. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I was talking to my artist friend, Mary Kate, last night about the intuitive nature of drawing. Like when we draw as much, when, when you draw as much as I do, which is like 30 years, an hour a day of drawing, you just do things subconsciously. And that's one of the struggles I have showing people about drawing is I just assume that everyone knows how to move their fingers. And just the way that I don't know how to talk very good, other people don't know how to use their fingers very good. I forget that I have to really step it down to the basics. Get basic. Get your pumpkin spice latte. and Get your pencils and pens out. And draw primitive shapes, circles and squares and triangles. You gotta work on it. Oops, that's too. I don't like. I want more of that blue atmosphere between us and this back cloud, so it's not going to be as saturated as the foreground clouds. Still gonna get that gradient though. It's gonna go a little bit red, but not a whole lot. So I just dab a little bit in there, and then sample it because it's mixed with the background. Let me get something close. Let's do one of those like JJ Abrams style like mid mid glows that goes through goes through the thing. Well, hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, this has given you something to think about, and maybe it inspires you to go and draw. You look at this and you say, Tom, that's all right, but I think I can draw better, and I hope you can. I hope you can make something better than this. This is just to get you going, just to get you flowing, maybe just to let you zone out and watch somebody pretend to be productive for an hour or two. So I hope you got something out of it. Keep drawing out there. Think about the forms. Think about the shapes. Think about that little bit of light that travels around like a like an, a gregarious party party goer who wants to talk to everybody in the room and it picks up a little bit of that color as it goes around before finally arriving at your eyeballs and bringing with you all the stories of every little location and part of this universe that that droplet of light and joy in life has picked up along the way. We're just people here listening to stories. And when you look at something, you're taking in the story of a photon. How cool is that? How cool is that? Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.